Thank you very much, Emra. My book is entitled uh, Gulen's Dialogue on Education, a Caravanserie of Ideas. And let me give you a little bit of background in light of what we have been hearing. I, if you've known me for a while, you know I don't wear any uniform. I uh, became involved with the Gulen uh, movement in 2007. I have spent extensive amount of time in Turkey. I hitched there, hitchhiked there in 1958-59 for the academic year, spending most of the time in Syria. Uh, I have been a Fulbright scholar. Let me give you a bit of background from my book because that'll contextualize essentially why I chose to write about Gulen. And if you'll envision a Venn diagram, you can see the Venn diagram as Gulen the heart of this series of chapters on those writers. If you have been in education, you know very well. And these writers can, uh, really are, are circles around this centerpiece with Gulen in the center. And I see Gulen, as I mentioned yesterday in my talk, as an education philosopher of the past I went to a 50th reunion of the third class I taught three weeks ago. I started teaching in 1961. I've taught secondary or had been an administrator in secondary for 15 years. I've taught at every level except for the community college. I've taught for 35 years at Humble State University. At Humboldt State University, I founded the second writing project, the second and third writing project in what has become the National Writing Project funded by Congress up until two years ago. The Redwood Writing Project and the Hoopa Valley Native American Writing Project, which I directed personally on the reservation for 10 years, was because of my reverence for first uh, uh, the Native American population in the Hoopa region. My work in writing uh, goes back to those writing projects that I started. My PhD was a study of secondary student writing in California. I, I had an N of over five figures. I ran a two-tailed T test. Uh, I have studied extensively the nature of writing. If you look at my website, gagepage.org, gagepage.org, you'll see I have been involved in authoring editing 20 books. I um, started contiguous with the uh, writing project, a master's degree in the teaching of writing. And of date, we have five directors of state writing projects in the United States out of my master's in the teaching of writing. So I feel I have some perspective on the nature of writing, not as an act within the discipline of English, but the, the nature of writing as a means for learning. One of the big breakthroughs in my discipline about 1965 was this notion that we have always been using writing to report on prior learning. Please write an essay on the chapter six by next Friday. Well, what we discovered from the British study called the Development of Writing, uh, the Re Development of Writing Abilities that came out of the London School of Economics, a study of 42 schools in England and Wales studying writing in five different discipline, uh, disciplines, what we found was one of the most effective ways of learning is through writing. So back to the book, why I wrote this book. I taught a graduate course in the Masters in the Teaching of Writing for 33 years, and the title of it was that study in Britain, the development of writing abilities, K, or, uh, grade seven essentially through first year of community college. And what I uh, found in the writings of Dewey, in the writings of Montessori, in the writings of international writing like le writers like Lev Vygotsky, Montessori, Kurt Hahn in Germany, the Swiss Jean Piaget, the Canadian Alban Bandura, was a host of souks within this caravanserai. And when I read Gulen, I saw the overlap, particularly the work of James Moffat, chapter eight, who I found an, an incredible resonance. Moffat, in being probably the finest rhetorician of the last century, according to his publisher, Bob Boynton, uh, has made a big impact in the United States, but has faded with his passing. 
I've been involved with the Asilomar Conference. It really gave birth to the National Writing Project. I was there last weekend, 62nd year of running that conference. But what I'm seeing in the United States is something fading that I see, uh, in fact, emerging from the Gulen movement. And that's what I was addressing yesterday, this idea of an I-thou attuning in teaching. And I have often wondered, what is it? Now, I've been to Turkey over 20 times. I, uh, I have known Kamalist. I've been a guest to the Moda Club in Istanbul in Karakoy. Uh, I have known many, many uh, judges uh, from the, uh, as I say, I don't wear a uniform. In fact, I'm organizing the Humboldt State University International Education Program uh, the week of the 20th of November, and my featured speaker is a poet named Ali Aydin, who was in the Ghazi demonstrations, and he is not favorable to Galan. So I have a book out on Galan, and Ali's going to be talking, and I think we will have a harmonious dialogue, as we have witnessed right here in these two days. But I think what, what, what is so interesting as I get closer and closer, and I'm not an, I hope I'm not an Orientalist, but I have, uh, I've have had a rich experience in Turkey and in Syria. I have three grandsons who are half Arabs from, uh, from Aleppo. I have great reverence for the Middle East. And I have despised what I've seen in the media over the years. And so in my retirement, I'm doing what I can in order to expunge that in my quixotic fashion. But the uh, thing that I've been picking up on within the Gulen community is this concept of visionet. The idea that you just know what you're doing. You're not in it for what somebody is going to uh, provide you with, uh, you know, in terms of kudos, which is very big in the United States. Um, it, you are doing it because you have this sense of, of purpose and mission, and I like that a lot, because that's the kind of idea that Jim Moffat had, and it should permeate throughout the United States, and in fact, I believe that Moffat's ideas uh, can permeate, permeate in any language, and that's one of the reasons why I could bring Moffat with his spiritual side, too, along with uh, uh, other writers like Dewey and Han and uh, Montessori. But I see Gulen as, as having achieved, through his work in four decades, something that maybe can't be achieved in the United States. I mean, I'm an American. I uh, grew up in California. My great uncle was the governor of the state. And I find that the, uh, there are there's something wrong, really wrong in our culture. And we have to face it. You know, I had a brother and a nephew, my godson, killed by a gun. And this is something we don't talk about in this society. And we are really hot to talk about the problems in the Middle East and how these people hate each other. But 30,000 Americans get killed every year with guns. And I find this reprehensible. Uh, I think what we have to do is be a little bit honest and investigate our culture. I've traveled all around the world. I've taught in China. I've taught in Morocco. I've taught in Greece. I've taught in Syria. And yet, I find that my relatives were murdered, and they hadn't really been out of the state of, state of California. Uh, we are, fear, you know, we've been living in a state of fear in this country to such an extent, and yet what we should really be fearful about is what might be lurking down the block. That's not getting to the book, but what I'm getting at at the book is when I look at Gulen's work, when I look at the peace movement, when I look at the efforts of those in the field starting projects like Kim se yok Mu, the schools, I find great hope. And when you're, in, you're 76 years old, you know it's great to see that kind of ember of hope. Thank you.